Arbi Murado Marcio André Up, straight straight to this. That was a good defense by Marshall. First out, first round out of three. Good attempt by by Arby. Is that a takedown? It is. A, you have to hold for three seconds. Good attempt. Very well defended by Marshall. You got to hold for three seconds, Orbit. This is an experienced competitor. Although he's really young, he really can, you know, grapple with some of the best guys in the world over the last few years. And he's not going to make one of those uh, rookie mistakes and just accept the takedown. You can expect him to fight his way up every single round. Very well defense from Marshall. That is uh, a exactly on the mark on the mark <laughs> on the mark and holding the grips which is doesn't get penalized see that's very that's smart that, of yeah, exactly that's that's the intelligent competitor right there he just knows he understands the rules and knows how to use the rules in his favor he does not want to wrestle with Arby. he's just waiting for that minute to go by to be able to pull guard Marshall, who, who is very specialized guard, good good player. guard player showing tremendous technique in the past year competing surprising a lot of people being in big names absolutely and uh, yeah, Marshall here came like uh, over the, the foot lock attempt. Man. Like he, I never, you know, you didn't hear much about him until recently. And that's oh, a oh. good he looks at look at that by RB. Marshall's not. He looks very relaxed. Yeah, he's really relaxed. Nothing happened like that. Two points for Marshall right there. Just, Just remember, there's no advantages on the on the, the advantage. ACB. But there are negatives. Marshall there with the knee slice pass. Heavy pressure on that underhook. Not a whole bunch of, yeah. Pass. Right there. Probably, what do you normally do there? You get underhook, you get your head under control. The if opponent's already freed the knee. If I'm on the top, actually, I have a very good technique that I, if I let the, the arm wet RB head before I move my neck, I okay. like to wrap around my own neck and then submit him in the shoulder pressure. Oh, you got to show me that. That's a very interesting one. But, but like, from, from the bottom guy's perspective, like, it's very, well, not a whole bunch of options there, right? No, you, the thing that you need to do, as you know, it cannot keep your, your back on the ground. You need yeah, to try to that's, be on the that's side normally what I really try to emphasize when I teach. It's like, you really want to be on your side. Make that effort not to be flat on your back, really, ever. I can't really think of many situations in jiu-jitsu where, you know, being on your flat on your back is a good thing. My first thing that I, I would oh, ever think Kimura when I get there with Marcio, almost a back tech. Oh, now, very good. Sweet. See, but you see what he did? He knew there were no points there. That's why he accepted the bottom. Exactly. Smart competitor. Very smart. He had very interesting questions from the pro. That's why it's important to do the rules. Yeah. Because then you cannot, you cannot blame the player, you blame the rules. Bro, I normally break jiu jitsu into three phases or three uh, uh, different categories technique, physical conditioning, and tactics. They're Mindset. equally important. You can't walk in there just in shape and be an outstanding uh, grappler if you don't really understand tactics. It's part of what we do. And I think that's true for every sport, really. No. I'm sure you could think of a few guys who are not necessarily outstanding grapplers, but they did exceptionally well in competition just because they understood the rules so well. And also the mindset, Robert. So you can also see a lot of a lot of fighters. They do so well in in training. When they get to competition, they just unleash. And you see the opposite too. Need that though. Yeah. Fourth aspect right there, bro. The fat of fourth aspect, the mental aspect. One just that confidence and. Eight zero. So that means so far eight. that would be ten eight round. Ten eight round. He's putting RB in a very complicated situation. He needs to win very well on the second round to be able to go to the match point. Uh, to the round to decide. Marcio Andre, who lost um, to the final semifinal for the the, the, the the Grand Prix, the Guy Grand Prix. I can't remember now. But he lost to Edwin. Really good match. I believe it was the final. 
great match. On the one, right? Yes, great it was match. An amazing it match. It was incredible. He was winning all the rounds in the last yes. minute. Yes, well, Edwin just turned it on. The, crazy. The, 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 la the last, uh, I think, round three or four, I can't remember now. That's the advantage of having a submission as a threat. Yeah. People who place by points, you can deal better. But if the guy is dangerous of any time, you can never relax, you know even the last minute. Oh, oh, That's a like very good hook attempt. Wow. Very good attempt by Arbe. And well defended by Marshall. Marshall. really confident with his defense there. But that was wrong. I like it. Well, I love awesome. the heel hooks, Brawley. Brawley, what do you think of like, the heel hooks coming back in the future? Um, man, heel hooks is so effective and it's so dangerous. Here we go. Second round. Arbi Muradov and Marshall Andre. That was a 10 8 round for Marshall Andre. So puts Arbi on the back, back foot and he needs to really act on the second round. You can expect them to really turn on to try to get that wrestling, that takedown in the first minute before Marshall Andre is allowed to. Exactly what we would expect. That's a good takedown. Well defended. Sharp, so, Robert, if Marshall wins this round, only chance is Arbi, he has to submit. submit. Easy. Brother, I kind of like this one minute wait because now you'll see guys normally that would normally pull guard right away. They're not doing that, right? Exactly. They, they so now Marshall is forced to stand up exactly. a little bit. I really like that. I like that too. It's, but especially, it doesn't happen. That, you know what also happens? Do you know when you start the match and you already know the guy's going to jump guard? Yeah. So you want to jump guard. It, it, that changes a little bit yes. the start because yeah. both can play that game. But when the, the flight is flowing, after one minute, it, you're not that fast. You exactly. don't, you cannot, it's, the exactly. game is better to watch. Yeah, and it's such a fundamental aspect of what we do is to stand up and, yeah, once again on the mark. I can't tell if it's coach telling uh, yeah, yeah, his That's the wife importance of the coach telling right him now. that he, it's the one minute mark has passed or if he's actually looking at the clock the whole time. Exactly. Because he's on the mark every time. Exactly. It's a coach thing. I can see. Smart, smart woman. Imagine pass, passing Marcio Andre's guard would be a nightmare. I'm actually of the opinion it's harder to pass a smaller guy's guard than a heavier weight. I'd much rather no pass like a heavyweight's guard. Oh, Nick, it's so no, much easier. It's so difficult. Yeah. They have the, sh the knees are just glued to yeah. their no, body. No, yeah, exactly. They're like a little shell. And just because they're small doesn't mean they're not strong. Exactly. Their hip flexors are crazy strong. Their grips are crazy strong. One, one thing that I have been telling a lot of my seminars and all my classes is that one of the, the concept bet, uh, on the pass, you need to fit yourself between my opponent's elbows and knees so you can get through. Yes. So when you're defending, you bring that knee glued to your elbows and you don't let that gap appear, you're yep. never going to be able to stabilize the, 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 pass, yeah. the, the pass. So it's, it's, it's tricky. So I have like a, I teach a series there when I'm passing, bro. I'm going to show you one of these days. And it's basically what I try to do is A, get, if I can't detach that knee from the shoulder, I I try to get them to turtle up or I try to lock their hips in the other direction because detaching that knee from the shoulder, breaking that shell is very, very difficult. You can see Arby there on his knees, good stance, but so difficult to move forward on a guy like Marcio. Uh, his best he's shot is really to bite for that heel hook, right? You can see that Arby is trying to put Marshall on the back spot to be able to apply for that heel hook very deep. I, I really think that's his best bet at this point. You know, yeah. and, you know, because he's not going to pass his guard. I, I just can't see him passing Marshall's guard. Marshall was so clever on that minute mark. Oh yeah, because it's Cause crazy. It was, it was clear that Arby had the advantage on on his feet. On the and, feet for sure. You know, Marsh is just waiting for that one minute mark. But again, it's predictable because you know that Arby's going to try to push in that one minute, and you know. Marcio is not necessarily in a hurry to take him down. He knows that once that minute goes by, he can pull guard and he can go back to his comfort zone. Trying to tempt in that single X there. That's the real hook attack. That was well defended by Arby. Wow. That's a stay where you go. That you would see? have normally been an advantage. IBJF. Exactly. But you see that Marshall didn't follow through stand up, so he kept kept himself on the bottom without losing smart. any points. Yeah, Very smart. Marsh is really smart uh, fighter. Really smart fighter. I, I think by f uh, competing on these rules, uh, they he, he start understanding more, be more confident on, on, on these strategies, you know, because I think that was one of his mistakes against Edwin. When he fought Edwin Najmi on the last, on the no gi, on the he gi won. one, yeah, he blasted with yes. many points, many points, and then he got tired of it. I remember, well, Edwin just almost wasn't himself. 
until I think it was the third round maybe he turned it on and just things changed dramatically because really it was almost like it reminded me of the Mayweather Connor McGregor fight because it was almost like Mayweather was waiting for Connor to wear himself out until he like changed gears. Correct. And that's kind of what Edwin did to Marcio Andre when they fought in the gi. And then if he, that was a tactic, that was an amazing tactic. It was brilliant. No, I mean, it requires a lot of confidence because if you're going to like, you know, not, you know, just be defending yourself in the first two rounds, that's not an easy thing to do against a guy like Marcio. We need to talk later about what do you think about the Mike Gregor fight? Oh, man. But not I, I actually have a good story about it. Yeah. Yes. Well, I think it would be very un unfair on boxing if Mike Gregor would win that fight. You yes. know, you cannot well, start I, on your first match against one of the okay, best so of I all times. I from a guy who was part of uh, Mayweather's camp. Mayweather put a lot of money on himself to win between around 8, eight and 12. Because most people that were betting on Mayweather, they bet him to win the first five or five, first eight rounds or whatever, right? So by putting a lot of money on himself to win between round eight. Oh, oh nice, beautiful he hook by RB. Hook. That On was time. close, man. It was like a leaping hook. Very hero. good. It's not incredible. Second round. It was even. It wasn't even. 10-10. Yeah. 10-10. Really gotta Arby, try he's to get got to go for takedowns yes, right now. He's got, he needs that he needs takedown. That, he needs that seven points lead. Yes, plus not, the even attempts of the heroes. You're going to have to pass his guard twice you know, to turn it around. I thought he was really close with those heel hook attempts a couple times at least. Those heel hooks were tight. You can see um, what a good attempt. You can see Marsh is really on the defensive mode right now. Yeah. Let's see if he's going to pull guard on the dot. Here we go. <laughs> on the mark once again. On the mark again. You, could you hear his corner? I can't tell if it's the corner if he's just looking at the clock. I couldn't see, actually. That's it's probably his corner. Actually, again, you know, I mean, you focus on RB trying to take you down and but, looking at the clock at the same time. But he was looking at the clock before he even saw yeah. it. Uh, before he jumps. He was turned around towards the, 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 the time mark. His mark. Probably is that your second or third Red Bull? Don't lie. <laughs> that is my second. That's one. your second. I'm still on the first. Jet lag. Jet lag is a it's, real thing, guys. It's been keeping me. No <laughs> but all for the love of this sport. Of course. It's totally worth it. I wouldn't like to miss this opportunity to watch those fights in the first row first ever. Would you? Oh, no. No way. I'll be there with the same pass. I don't, I'm not a big fan of passing on the knees, Brawley. What do you think? I think defensively it can be efficient. But for offensive purposes, on the no gi is really difficult. It's, it's just with too the hard gi, to make it can be possible. You can get that half guard, pull yourself Yeah, because in, you can you know, grip, you can chest. Chest. slump the guy out with yeah, using the grip. Like, but I, you cannot use the grips that. I normally just, I, I just emphasize standing so much more. You gotta be careful with your feet, though. A lot of times when you're standing, you step on the outside. Next, next thing you know, you're in a single extra heel hook. So you gotta be sharp. But generally speaking, moving forward, standing is always gonna be more efficient. Next fights, we're gonna be watching Rodrigo Caporal and Marcelo Mafra. Ah, uh, Marcelo, La Pella, huh? La Pella. Let's see how he does without the gi. Because his name, La Pella, means La Pella in, in, in English. That means that he got to be very yes. tight out there. <laughs> La Pella is something else, man. He's one of the best guys I've ever trained with, Brolio, hands down. Honestly. Yeah. I would love to see that. Rodrigo Caporal is based uh, in Hong Kong. He's, He's from in Atos. Hong Kong. He's from uh, uh, Atos. My, not too far away from where I grew up. I grew up in Itu, on the inside, uh, interior of Sao Paulo. Sorry, my, I, I mean, yeah. like, he lives in, not from, yeah, but yeah. he lives he there in Hong, Hong Kong, Kong right He's now. originally from Hill Claro, I believe. Don't quote me on it, which is not too far from where I grew up. And uh, Marcelo Mafra, he's based in Brazil, right? He's in, uh, no, he's in um, uh, Victorville. Victorville, California. Oh, okay. Yeah, he's been there for a few years. I was going to see who is going to be in the better shape for the jet lag scenario. I think so. pretty beat up. One and a half minutes. Arby could maybe try to switch sides. You can always see he's always passing his left. And that seems to be the side Marcio under his most comfortable. You see he always leans to his right. I just noticed that Marcio started playing very safe for the second and the third round. Because he got such a good lead. 
sweeping a guy like Arby is not going to be easy. He's not easy he's gonna, at all. Even if, let's say, you do get him off balance, it's so much easier to scramble without the gi. He's going to be able to get back to his, uh, uh, back to his feet. And such a good wrestler holding Very him down will be a nightmare. And he's, he's so strong. Yeah. I, I, have, I, mean, I have never trained, trained with him. Yeah, I believe he's so strong. He's Russian, man. Yeah, man. They all are so strong. I don't know what they eat. <laughs> Those Russians, man. He actually from Chechnya. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, after he said it, I realized it was, well, yeah, they, they make two that points. distinction. Oh, is he, is he, make, is he going to do it? Is he secured the two points? But, uh, nice. here we go, like, what else could Arby do? He had to go for submission. No, exactly, you know, he was out of options. He followed the right thing. It's only 25 you know, seconds. Hindsight is 20-20, bro. Had he, had he uh, because he missed, some people might be looking at that was a bad move, but had he gotten it, it would have been a genius, right? He did the right thing. Marshall was playing very defensive and nice Marcel potentially with the submission 10 seconds left Ten let's seconds see if he go. can pull it off Arby with the defense the crowds go mad over here yeah Marcel with the big following with the crowd ladies and gentlemen we got the first winner this evening your winner is Marcio oh 